Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with DevCentral. And in this video, we're gonna talk about GraphQL security and how you can achieve that security with the F5 Advanced Web Application Firewall. Uh, so first of all, what is GraphQL to begin with, right? Well, GraphQL is essentially a query language for APIs. Uh, it's developed as, a, uh, as this alternative to RESTful APIs or REST. And so with RESTful APIs, uh, you send a request to an API endpoint from a client, and then the API returns a JSON object that's got a lot of other data with that response, right? Um, and so with GraphQL, instead of hitting um, a URL endpoint and getting a large JSON object back, you, in GraphQL, write a query to request exactly what you want in the data, right? The exact data that you would like. So it's been described, GraphQL has been described as describe your data, ask for what you want, and then get predictable results. So that's kind of the heart and soul of GraphQL, right? So um, with GraphQL, it was developed by Facebook back in 2012. It was open source in 2015. It's gained a lot of popularity. It's on the rise. Um, and so the graph part of this is effectively a representation of nodes and edges uh, where nodes are data points and edges are relationships among those data points, right? Um, and so, uh, you know, compared to REST or RESTful APIs or RESTful endpoints, um, REST does not provide as much granularity when you request data. Uh, so there's this, there's this idea of over or under fetching that could happen with REST, whereas GraphQL allows a lot more granularity, a lot more specific requests to get exactly the data that you want, like I was just talking about. So a couple of quick pictures here to give you a kind of an idea. In a RESTful API scenario, you would have a client uh, that is sending, you know, API requests to your RESTful endpoint. So let's say you have, you know, here's a few different, um, you know, REST-based endpoints. So this is REST APIs. So in order to get to these endpoints, then you need to send and then receive um, you know, queries or requests to and from these specific URLs, these specific RESTful endpoints, right, from the client. Uh, but then I'll just draw a little line here. But then with GraphQL, it's a bit different because you have a client requesting information or, you know, trying to access your endpoints. So you still have these same API endpoints back here, right? So here's a few of them. But then you have the GraphQL here in the middle, and I'm gonna draw, uh, this is kind of a diagram of the way that they do it in GraphQL, and I'm just gonna kinda, I'll try to do a little representation. So you got all these nodes, like I mentioned, uh, these data points, and then these, uh, you know, these, these connections between them, the, uh, the relationships between those data points, those nodes, and then these edges, right? So with this, the client sends one request to the GraphQL, URL, so one single query, but then this is then going to interact with the endpoints, um, you know, from this GraphQL uh, engine right here, this server, right? And so you can see the difference here between the client request, um, multiple requests, this is where the over or under fetching could happen in REST, whereas in GraphQL, it's a, it's a more efficient, um, you know, uh, request and response situation, and you only interact here with the GraphQL server, right? And that, that takes care of the, all of the other backend uh, communication, right? Okay, so as I mentioned, REST, there's multiple URLs. GraphQL is just defined by one URL. So when you talk about security with GraphQL, then you start talking about a web application firewall, and I'll just go ahead and put it right here. So here we could put the F5 um, advanced web application firewall. Uh, here in the middle, right? But on an on a web application firewall, you need to um, you need to configure your policies so that you um, you know that or, or typically you could you would configure the policies so that they are structured according to each URL. You know you look at different parameters on URLs or you know different URLs, different parameters, those kinds of things, right? Well, you can't do that with with GraphQL um, because of this single query. Uh, you know, setup that's going on here, right? So the policy here for GraphQL scenario, you know, has to analyze and operate at the query level, which the F5 Advanced WAF does that, right? Um, and so another thing that's possible here with GraphQL, just the nature, the inherent nature of GraphQL is it allows 
batching multiple queries, you know, there's efficiencies to be gained there, right? But there's also setbacks or security problems with that. Uh, so it allows this batching multiple queries in a single network call, um, but then that opens the door to different batching attacks, different you know, denial of service type attacks that are inherent here to GraphQL. All right, so I wanna talk about some specific things here at the F5 Advanced WAF level um, that F5 Advanced WAF does you know, to protect GraphQL specifically, right? All right, so, and I'm not gonna write every one of these out, uh, so just uh, hang in there and I'll describe each of these things. So here at the Advanced WAF, a GraphQL security policy template uh, is available and that, that enables you to quickly uh, deploy the GraphQL WAF policies, right? So that's one, that's one unique thing, really powerful here for Advanced WAF. Also, a GraphQL content profile uh, is available on the Advanced WAF and that would group together all the configurations that are relevant to GraphQL, right? Um, another thing is that Advanced WAF supports the most common GraphQL use cases uh, where the JSON payload is sent over POST or GET request, right? So, uh, so those are, those are another, that's another powerful thing. Um, also, native parsing of GraphQL enables you to apply the attack signatures against each JSON field, uh, and there's very low rates of false positives on this thing. So, so just by nature of what the F5 Advanced WAF does is it natively parses the, the GraphQL request and response. So, uh, so you can apply those attack signatures, ag again, against each JSON field. Um, also, it provides, the Advanced WAF provides protection against um, these denial of service attacks, these complexity-based uh, denial of service attacks, uh, it allows you to configure the uh, a maximum depth of query. So uh, one thing that I'll mention here, when you send in a request from the client to a GraphQL server, uh, you can get very complex with these queries, right? Just like with, with a lot of other query languages, um, you can get very complex. So what some attackers will do is they will take advantage of that and say, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna configure or create this very complex, very you know, multiple depth query that I will send to the GraphQL server that basically is just gonna overwhelm the resources of that and it becomes a, effectively like a denial of service attack from you know, the attacker. Well, the F5 Advanced WAF allows you to configure the maximum depth of query that's able to come into your uh, GraphQL server. So, uh, so that's another powerful thing that it, uh, that it you know, will, will provide. Um, and then another thing is, uh, I wanna mention this concept or this feature called introspection uh, that is uh, unique to GraphQL, just the way that it's developed. And introspection is uh, it's the ability to query which resources are available in the current API schema and so if you're given the API and then you're able to use this introspection, then you can see the queries, you can see the types, the fields, the directives, everything that it supports. So it's a, it's a good tool to use maybe from a developer's per perspective, you know, that kind of thing, but you wouldn't want to turn it on in production. And so Advanced WAF allows you to enforce best practices for deploying GraphQL APIs because it will do things like uh, you know, alert you to say, hey, you need to disable introspection. And so it can look for things like that, right? So that's another thing it does. Um, another, another thing it does is that it gives you an option to control the number of allowed batch requests. So, um, you know, rather than, I know we talked a second ago about the depth of request, uh, but another thing the attackers will do will just batch up a large number of requests that, that flood into the GraphQL server and just overwhelm that. And so uh, Advanced WAF allows you to control the number of allowed batch requests that come in. So that's a, it's another protection from like a potential DOS attack, right? Um, and then the GraphQL specific security violations that exist here on the Advanced WAF uh, allow the fine tuning of the WAF policy to protect specifically against uh, you know, attacks that would come in to GraphQL. So, the, uh, the actual configuration of the policy, of the GraphQL uh, WAF policy here at the Advanced WAF can be done a couple of different ways. One, through the graphical user interface, so just the, the GUI here uh, for Advanced WAF, or you can do this programmatically through a declarative policy model 
Um, it allows easy integration if you've got an automated environment, CICD tools, those kinds of things. So the F5 Advanced WAF provides significant security protection for GraphQL. And so the idea here is use GraphQL. It's very, you know, there's a lot of benefits to it. It's uh, the popularity is on the rise, all those kinds of things. But there are some inherent security issues with GraphQL that you need to take into account. And so you need to put an, an F5 Advanced WAF in front of that to not only use GraphQL, but secure GraphQL. So, hey, thanks for watching this uh, Lightboard lesson video with us today. If you like this thing, you can click up here on our DevCentral logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.